again, it's Lydia from Warwick Street Kitchen in Leamington Spa. Welcome back to the Brewing Badass Coffee at Home series and a massive apologies for a big gap in content. I completely lost my voice last week, couldn't even speak to customers, let alone record a video, so apologies. It does mean though I had loads of time to plan loads of content in the next few videos, so we should get them in quite quick succession now. Today we're going to discuss grind, coffee grind, coffee grind size, about buying pre-ground coffee if you're doing that and what's wrong with that, what could be going wrong with your brew at home and why it will be massively affecting the taste of your coffee. So I talked about this a little bit in the extraction video last time, last time we met and how grind size could massively affect the taste of your coffee. Now if we can relate this back to extraction, so we all now have an understanding that if water has been in contact with coffee for too long, you are likely to get over-extracted coffee or the taste of over-extracted coffee. Therefore, we can relate this to the sand and the stones analogy that I talked about before, how if you're flushing water through a big pot of big chunky rocks, and flushing water through really fine compacted sand, it's gonna get through the rocks much faster. That's a really good analogy to help you understand grind size and how it relates to the taste of your coffee. If something is much finer, contact time with water is going to be longer because there is more resistance. It takes longer for the water to get through the coffee. It's pretty basic science really, and I think once someone explains it to you, it's really quite easy to get your head around it. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, in that sense is if you are experiencing certain common taste complaints at home. For example, if your coffee is really, really bitter, we know that's likely to be on the over-extracted side. So there could be two things happening here relating to grind, I suppose. One is that it could be ground just too fine for the brew method that you are brewing. Therefore, there is too much contact time and it's just extracting too much flavour, etc. Is too much flavour a thing? You know what I mean. If your coffee is lacking flavour, if it's not interesting, if it's not blowing your mind, and we've already dealt with water, we know that you're using filtered water, it could therefore be that your coffee is under-extracted, there's not enough contact time, your grind could be too coarse. I am going to talk about where you should start in terms of coarse or fine grinding etc depending on what you're brewing at home. But first of all I want to attack the thing I think is such an easy thing to be getting wrong and I, I wager that so many of you are, are getting this wrong is that I bet you're buying pre-ground coffee and let me tell you why it's not a good idea. Coffee freshness is all related to oxygen levels and how much, how quickly or how much oxygen is getting to the coffee. It's not going to go off or anything, it's not a health hazard, but the taste is going to deteriorate, it's going to get less interesting, the quality of the coffee is going to deteriorate over time. That's why people get really, really consumed with roast date, when the coffee was roasted, how fresh it is. Now, specialty coffee roasters these days are putting like little tiny pinholes or like almost like a controlled hole, so to speak, on the coffee bags, which are controlling the amount of oxygen that's getting to that coffee. Now, if you're buying it ground, it's all about surface area, right? You are introducing more surface area to your coffee, therefore more oxygen can get to it. It's going to lose its freshness much faster. Now, my general rule of thumb, say for example, we make this mistake behind the bar here and we, we grind off a shot of coffee, the customer either changes their mind about what they want or actually we misheard and they wanted a cup of tea instead. I'm saying unless the customer comes up to the till within the next two minutes who wants a latte or an Americano or anything else that requires that shot, we're throwing it away. Because we've ground that coffee down, it's now out in the elements, susceptible to oxygen and the quality of it is going to significantly deteriorate really, really quickly. So imagine how long that coffee has been ground for by the time it's on your supermarket shelf or your shop shelf or by the time it's been sat at home, say you get a coffee shop to grind it for you. We won't grind coffee for people here. We're very polite about it. We just explain that we're not happy with the quality of the coffee at that point um, and we won't grind coffee for you. So imagine how long it's been sat there, ground, on the shelf, before you even get to it. 
I also bet you that if you're buying ground coffee, is there any information on that pack about when it was ground? The kind of companies that are gonna sell you ground coffee are the kind of companies that are also gonna be a little bit shady about when that coffee was roasted. It's probably just not fresh enough in the first place anyway. I could do an entire other video around coffee after roast dates. People have this real stigma about it being within a certain amount of time after roast date, and rightly so, you don't want to be using it months down the line. But I would argue that if you're willing to accept your coffee's going to taste different a month after roast than it did two weeks after roast, it's not going to taste bad, but the flavour profile will be different. I'd argue it's still a great cup. But anyway, we're not using coffee a month after roast here, but again, another video for another day maybe. So, how to get around this? Buy coffee beans, and I'm going to introduce you at the end of this video to some really simple solutions, and relatively cheap solutions, to grinding your own coffee at home. So if we can now all accept that buying ground coffee is not great, it's going to massively affect the taste of your coffee, it could be one of the really big reasons that you're disappointed with the way that your coffee tastes at home, and the fact that it doesn't taste like it does here, because we're grinding it on demand every single time you ask for our coffee. We're going to move on to grind size and the variables and where you should be starting depending on how you're brewing at home. So we're going to start at the coarse end. I mentioned before the coarse end is your sort of cafetiers and the really really the fine end is espresso. Also in the coarse end, as I mentioned previously, cafetier, French press, that kind of brewing. Medium coarse, your Chemexes. I brew a Chemex every day, it's my favourite home brew method just because it's relatively easy and you always get really great results. Well, for me, anyway. Uh, going towards medium, your filters, like your, I guess, I think the Americans call them percolators, like your sort of bun filters. We have one here just out of shop. Not many people have these at home now, but if you do, you wanna be sort of on the medium side. Getting a little bit finer now, although nowhere near as fine as espresso, we're talking about pour overs, such as your V60s, any sort of cone brew like that. Your siphons, if you're getting a siphon out at home, my hat off to you. I want to come around yours for a coffee. I'm going to put AeroPress in here. However, AeroPress, depending on the method, because there are so many methods, with, there are a few different methods within AeroPress, it can tolerate a lot more variances in, in grind size and it can still taste good, but it doesn't want to be super coarse in my experience. But yeah, disclaimer there, if you're brewing air presses, if you're at that stage, do experiment with it. And then, yeah, super fine, your espresso, your stovetop mocha pots, that kind of thing. So this little formula of sort of coarse to fine is really a starting point for you to experiment with how your coffee tastes. So say you're brewing a Chemex, you start medium, and then you can go taste-wise from there. Again, refer back to the extraction video and what we learned about extraction. If you think your coffee doesn't quite taste sweet enough, maybe it's not, you know, maybe you need to think about going a little bit finer, maybe it's a little bit too coarse. If it's too bitter, you know, you need to go a little bit coarser. If it's too astringent or acidic, maybe you need to go finer. Refer back to that little diagram I put together in the extraction video and tweak from there, just really experiment with it. With it. This is just a starting point, just a guideline. Finally, how can we go about grinding coffee at home? Now, I am, I don't sell coffee grinders. I have absolutely no affiliation with any coffee grinding company or manufacturer. I mean, I love this grinder that we have here, but that's, that's an industrial grinder. You're not gonna have that at home. So I have a couple of grinders at home that I can vouch for. One is a Hario hand grinder, which you can get off Amazon. I think it's around about the 30 pound mark. So it's super affordable to start experimenting with this at home. However, I have struggled to get it fine enough to do anything on it anywhere sort of towards espresso. I've also heard really good things about the Rhino wear hand grinder and how that can actually go finer. If you want to go down the electric route, I've recently uh, got myself a Bodum electric grinder, which I've got really good things to say about. Again, it doesn't go massively fine. But again, I, I have an argument that you can't really make great espresso at home. Please argue me, please disagree, please tell me about a machine that makes great espresso at home. I'd really like to hear about it. 
I've heard big things about DeLonghi electric grinders. There's loads of little home electric grinders out there. And actually there's loads of articles online about people who've tried and tested these. So if you want to go down that route, do a bit more research and try and find someone who has reviewed it online and, and has some kind of experience with it. But yeah, these hand grinders that you can start with are really affordable and it's going to make a massive difference to your coffee at home. So yeah, that's it on Grind for today. Any questions, as always, put them in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there's anything still that you're struggling with that I haven't covered yet. I'm sure we're going to cover it in the next few weeks. But yeah, keep your eyes out for even more brewing bad coffee. Brewing bad coffee at home? Oh my goodness, that's one for the blooper reel. Brewing badass coffee at home series. See you next time. Bye.